shit! A rat! Rami the Rat always wanted to become a chef, and by the end of the events in Ratatouille, he was able to achieve this lifelong dream by fighting prejudice with his culinary skills. He became the head chef of his own little bistro, and even managed to win over the hearts of many critics. Rami earned his way to the top, despite being a rat in an industry that frowned upon his mere presence in the kitchen. But while he might have gotten the critics and health inspectors on his side, the majority of consumers remained hesitant. They didn't feel comfortable paying for dishes prepared by rats with rat hands scurrying about in the kitchen on their rat feet. They had a decent number of loyal customers who came to dine with them regularly, but it wasn't enough to maintain a business. Eventually, they had to close, but Remy remained optimistic. He believed that the market would eventually turn, and so he kept searching for new investors. Unfortunately, nobody felt confident in Remy's vision. Even Anton Ego, who staked most of his retirement fund on Remy's previous endeavor, couldn't bring himself to lend him another cent. It's not that he didn't believe in Remy, it's that he didn't believe the world was ready. Remy became depressed. He wouldn't sleep, wouldn't come out of his room, but more importantly, he wouldn't eat. It was as if his heart was just wrenched out of his chest. His dad, Django, tried to talk to him, but their conversations never bore any fruits. It was like talking to a husk, a mere shadow. And soon after, Remy tragically passed from malnourishment, and it drove Django to his breaking point. Django blamed the world that refused to accept his son. He assembled an army of rats and vowed to reshape the world into one that Remy would have been proud of. They controlled the bodies of billionaires just as Remy once had with Alfredo Linguini. They opened a chain of restaurants that were entirely run by rats, lobbied against human restaurants and passed bills to ban humans from kitchens. They controlled the bodies of celebrities and athletes to make them vouch for the quality of these rat restaurants to entice people into eating at these establishments. They took over the bodies of major Hollywood producers and executives, made a bunch of movies with rats in order to endear them to the public. But despite their best efforts, the prejudice against the rats remained strong. So as a last resort, Django assigned a rat for each human on the planet and had them control them, forced them to dine at their restaurants. Against their will, they consumed enormous amounts of food every day and were coerced into leaving generous tips. Django dedicated a huge chunk of his life to taking over the world, but even after all his hard work and effort, he still felt hollow. Nothing could fill the void a son had left in him. He had fathered many children over the course of his life, as many as there are stars in the sky. But Remy remained his favorite. Remy was special. As he watched the sunset beyond the horizon, Django wondered if his son would have been proud of what he accomplished. Or would he admonish him for becoming a monster? I'm a bag full of scallops and this has been another episode of Exclusive Expose. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more factual Exclusive Exposes. Have a wonderful, exclusive day.